it's all fine. And that disappears, and, yep. and here we are. Bye-bye. So, no, I mean, it is so interesting. This is a team everyone expected so much of, especially after the, the roster changes. Not to mention the good run they had at Malmo. They haven't, had, they haven't even repeated that with former major champions joining them. Fast rush on to be. Lekro's the only one there. Pick it up, though. I have to say, good impressive shot to start it off. Going down immediately after. Not only that, Shocks is aware of the fact that they well, not in B. They've got to be rotating behind. They've got to be pushing A because you've got to do one of the two as the CT side. Good pickup from Schneider's perspective as he walks back in. Bomb will get planted before Ooh. Pronek can do anything of it. Does tap away with missing shots. Looks wow. the wrong direction, and now it's on to Flush up. One versus two. No kid. Yeah, well, this is a difficult situation for Flush. And now it's three frags for RPK doing a good job there. And I have to say, Matt Pronex had to do a better job there. That's not really good enough. Coming out of the Monster Tunnel, at least do significant damage to the planter going down. He can't land the shots there. Just needed to find one kill. That's pretty much a lock-in for that kind of retake coming through. Pronex State doesn't land the shots required, and it's going to be RPK. Picking up three in total, the B rush, like you said, that we talked about for the same sort of reasons for training. You're rushing towards B on the T pistols, and most of them actually going towards B. It's a more isolated bomb site. It's normally smaller, with less entrances for the TTs to retake from once the bomb's down as well. It'll be difficult for them to actually do anything with it. But here we go then. Godsend. It's interesting. Um, it's going to be four players that fully invest into it. Pronax doesn't get head armor here. So we'll see what happens going forward. JW. He's got head armor as well, so all potential going into this round. Not Maybe not going to matter with Lekker over headshot like that. Such a star in the making. I was really excited when he got on to Fnatic. Equally excited to see him back on Godsend <laughs> back because he seemed, well, he was the kid of the deal. That was the thing. It was, yeah. you don't get Kerms back if we don't get Lekro back. And we see some good accuracy from him in that B site. Two pistol kills, unfortunately, though, it is just pistols. And as a result, they are going to get yet another bomb down to Mac 10s AK from Smith's. And he's got to be a little bit careful not to go down with that 28 HP if he does. Thankfully, RPK is still close enough by that they'll grab that rifle. Perimeter completely covered off, so there's going to be a confrontation on the escape no matter where they go. Yeah, well, the CTs now, they've got the head armor, they've got the CZ. Still, they just want to try and do all they can. Give the exits right now, I'm not overcommitting, just hoping that mistake is made by G2 at this point. But, Matt, while we're here, in terms of like, the predictions, we didn't really get to touch on themselves. I have to say, G2, got to be for you as well, the heavy favorites going into this one. We haven't seen much of Godsend recently to really impress us. G2, it, yes, they've had their problems recently, but still, this is the same five that have done a very good job in terms of 2016. They have won some titles. They have yes. had, they just, This has just been a rough end to the year, right? They still, and for me, they're still almost guaranteed for the top eight, in my opinion. But that's a decent run from Godsend. They fully buy into it. But uh, unfortunately, don't win the round, but they do take all the G2 down. Problem is now going forward, Godsend have to go full eco. So it's not really like it amounts to too much here. G2 is coming with the SMGs, farm some cash, keep it a clean round. Godsend have limited in terms of like the bigger picture, in terms of the four spies. It won't be like those crazy bonus rounds and a stack of cash should be a little bit looser, but still, we do have PD50s, Deagles, and an HU grenade for Pronax. He's got a Deagle as well. Oh, heavy nade damage towards Flusher there. And the 45, not as intense as I thought it would be. As you go into a pretty much full diva here, but shocks. Sniffing out towards the B side, and he finds Lecro. Not expecting him to be pushing in that quickly. He's got the back 10, why not? Doesn't give too much away. His team has got head armor. It's not a big deal, and shocks looking a little bit more here. Oh, okay. okay. Just get it. So they jump in. <laughs> yep. Sacrificial. Yeah, he just didn't want to play that round. Nah, I, I didn't either, to be fair. I don't blame you. Save your energy. Shocks will take down Pronex. 3 0. Guns to come out. Just to make a point on what you were saying as well, G2 has won titles this year. You're dead right. They're one of 10 teams that have won a premier level title. Those are the ones I consider. Of the top 10 teams, only one of them hasn't. That's FaZe. They're the highest rate. I'm going off the HLTV ratings just to be clear on this. The lowest rate is, oddly enough, Fnatic. And right behind them is Godsend. Not surprising. You split their roster, they split their results, and neither of them have yeah, played very often right. as of late. But G2 is the second lowest. And Fnatic's already in, so they are the lowest rated of the teams that has won a tournament this year that has to qualify for this major tournament. Yeah, insane. That was a very long, elaborate way of saying they have fallen considerably far from where they were the when Fnatic, they won that. Yeah, organization, etc. Like, let's see what happens here. B rush, we talked about this loose around. The Mac 10's coming in. So far, the CD's getting the line share, the kill. Three for them. RPK finding one in return, but that's shut down the B rush. Should be a CT round at this point. Body gets flashed off. Thankfully, no one close to capitalize on that, but he's watching the AK gets his accuracy nearly on. Not quite catch Pronox in behind the barrels. While all this is going on, Shox thinks he's being clever from construction. Unfortunately, he's checkmated by JW. Finally, Body hits that shot. And if he hadn't hit that one, 
Speaking of flush, obviously, the nade certainly would have taken him down, so it's going to be the first round for Godsent. Well, there it is. Like I said, when you have those MAC-10s left over, the SMGs, you know, the CTs, Force Ball in the second, they're going to be limited. They're going to have the incendiaries. It might be going for aggressive play towards middle. Uh, B-Rush at that point, a contact play. B is not bad at all. It's very unlikely he could have win if you don't get the entry kill there. It was shut down. Good HE grenades from Godsent. They managed to post their first round here, but 3-1. Lots of reset potential here, Matt. You can see the money still on the screen right now. 600, 800, 200. Like, if they lose this one, 1,400 going through. It's not going to be enough to buy. It could be a double eco going through it. So G2 are aware of this. This will be back to business now, back to defaults. And we got that aggressive play from the CDs towards Connector. Push through. Flasher, though, lines them up. Headshot into one, sprays down, and Scream was walking in his footsteps. Tracing the footprints in the snow, but it's going to be Flasher immediately after to take down Smiths as well. Good round from him. He soloed on that A side as well, where they wanted to get position in the lower tunnels. It works out well. Bomb gets dropped. You said reset potential. Forget that. That's out the window. Thankfully, Shock still has money built up because the rest of them do not. Question is how aggressive do they want to force on this? Shocks is left with 6150. The rest are quite low. I say pistols and leave it at that. Don't even invest Shocks. Don't go for a one gun and done. Yeah, historically, Flusher posts amazing stats at the mage. He's sometimes the best player at them. It's rare to see him in a major qualifier, right? But uh, still, it seems to be where he shines in these particular environments. Do you remember during the Olaf injury? Yes. They had the interview with Flusher, who's the best player in the world. He said, me. Yeah, it's good, right? Uh, well, now you're against Olaf. You're on another team, and if you really are, time to carry. Well, to be fair, Olaf is uh, he's kind of like not he's not the number one player in the world right now, right? So it's going to be difficult to have that comparison. But still, yes, it does make sense what you're saying in terms of like how much he has changed. But let's get into this one. The orb from Shocks opens up two kills, but it is going to be quick to reply. Still a three on three, but Flash out finds another three man. They're looking for four. Shocks does take him down. What a crazy round this has been. Shocks out toward long as well, has that to work with. Lecker's going to try and beat him there. He's got to be quick to get to the corner. Shocks. AWP has made a lot of noise, and Lecro's there. This is going to be a. Ooh, all right, Lecro, I was going to say free kill, but Shocks reads that perfectly. It's on a Pronax, 100 HP. He does have a kit, AK 47 in hand. RPK, though, very low. Only 3 HP is holding the bomb and letting Shocks go to work. He's got four kills so far. This could be an ace. Yeah, absolutely. This is the, the, the Yolo buy from Shocks. It comes in. Manages to find four kills to start the round. He can be very good at that weapon. Now, Pronax, the bomb is going to be towards T-Spawn for now. It's going to be shocks. He almost sacrificing himself, it seems. He's trying to find that kill as quickly as he can. This, I'm surprised Pronax not considering this. He has to consider this. He knows he was out toward long. Instead, he goes to bathroom. Now, this is where it gets interesting because I think he's going to beat him to RPK. Shocks is going to call it clear. RPK, 3 HP, now picks up an AK-47. So long as Pronax doesn't look away at the wrong time, should go down and with 30 seconds. Oh, I'm gonna say have the bomb and his footsteps. Well. Yep, shocks. He's I think up again his run at this point. No need to walk. Yeah, you think he's towards B as well. That's actually quite clever to uh, The call is from shocks go the exact same way I came. I've cleared that. If you get caught in the bathroom connector, bad luck, but this is smart. They'll get the site post plant safe inside. Yeah, really nice stuff. Shoxy, what a round this has been. Fantastic stuff from him. Not only did he find four kills, he gets all the information, allows RPK to walk into that A-bomb cell on the red carpet, and Pronax are so far removed from this. He's got two kills to find, not known to be the biggest fragger of the team. Shoxy for the ace, and that could have been it. Can't land the shot, but does know where Pronax is now. Problem is, he can go right and left on this stairwell. They wrap around each other. And he's actually going to bypass, smoke out on the bomb. Does have a kit, tries to bait it out. Shots come in, AK from the left. He's going to go for Shocks instead, though. He's the one with the high HP. This could still work out for Pronax, but he's going to go all oh, right now. That nade's going to do it. It's three HP, and he's on it. He's got Does it he have the time? He's that is it. so impressive. That's absolutely incredible. Wow. It all comes down to this Shocks AWP. Four kills, another two versus one. We didn't think Pronax maybe had even had the position there after being taken out of the round. Baited towards B, two versus one. He does have that magical 8G grenade, though, to finish things off there. Gets positional information as to where the terrorists are remaining. One in spawn, one in towards bank as well. Pulls out the 8G. As soon as he leaves his hand, you know that's nailed it. That's going to do it. And he has managed to win the two versus one as well. Full defuse comes in. Godsend still alive and kicking, it seems, but still being wounded in terms of the money going forward. They do have the double orb set up, though. That needs a Hail Mary, too, because he's looking for the ninja fuse in the smoke more than anything, hoping the nade might push him back. I doubt. He knew he was that low. His teammate may have called it, but it was a long time before. Pixel gap. JW can't quite land it. Does spot RPK, though, so nades him in. He's going to hold him. This will contain and Hits him. The leg shot through the wall, though, so only down to 54. Yeah, indeed. Double up setup can be very powerful on overpass. Means you can have to be maybe have a solo setup towards long A. Concentrate some more rifles towards the mid area. Seems like they've actually opted to stack towards B 
We do have a flash out with that AWP towards along on the flower bed for now. There are some flashes towards mid as well. Body trying to get some control of the middle, especially towards our bathroom area as well. Smoke goes in, pre fires some of these angles, and Shox does find a kill, taking down JW. That's one of the orbs dropped without a kill in return as well. And body with the position at bathroom as they start to clear that out. And rather push them back onto the A site. We'll now look elsewhere over toward B. They're just trying to create movement from the defense. And Lecro cleverly is going to push himself up and behind the smokes, trying to take advantage. Nicely timed Molotov. I thought if he gets toward that doorway, all right, there's a chance they rotate Schneider over slightly sooner and leave it to a 2 2 setup on the defensive side. They're not going to. It's all on a Pronax. Inside of the monster tunnel, left. Careful not to line up because that's so easy to do. And instead, they get the perfect trade. Yeah. One for one, not going to be good enough for this situation. 25 seconds remaining, they're smoked out as well. No kits and Scream lands a beautiful headshot down towards Schneider. It's flush on the retake. He's got the orb. He needs to be finding kills on the next five to six seconds, really. Smoked out, I think they have to save at this point. It could have gone for the boost, but I think to save the weaponry, it, the, the economy game is going to be a real struggle for them going forward. It's been some very close rounds indeed. Yes, they won three in a row, but G2 have been very, very close. A lot of those rounds, that one with the AWP of Shoxy as well, that comes to mind especially. He's on 10 kills right now. Scream, that's actually his first kill of the game so far. One for five, but still impressive one. Towards that B site, pretty much secures the round with that single kill. And Flusher and Lecro will be saving their weapons. It's not really worth the hunt for duty right now. They haven't established their own economy. You can see on the scoreboard right now. It's back and forth to start it off, but G2. Back into it with their fourth, build up the money a little bit further. They'll easily buy it on the CT side, even though flush is a little bit lower. But he's already got that op in hand, so they'll be able to justify it. And the question is kits. They're going to have, oh, come on, JW. He's got to go for armor. It does do so, but is he going to get a kit? Doesn't. It goes for utility instead, so only two kits. Yeah, I, th I would like to have seen a third. Two kits is fine. You have one on either side of the map, right? That's it's the big low. thing. So it's not it's not a huge deal, but still, Smiths, he's got the AWP this time. It was Shoxy leading the charge of that weapon before, but JW, he's going to be going a little bit aggressive there, decides to back out. Now Nuzo is a little bit vulnerable there, doesn't have the smoke to work with, so multiple angles that could be taking him down. At this point, this is a full default. Shoxy, known to be going towards B, likes to try and find kills by himself, certainly capable of doing that. Schneider on the other side as well. He thinks he's spotted a weakness here potentially as well. Right click flashbang, trying to find his first pick. Has it, of course, but Lecro on the refrag. Well traded. The problem is, again, the opening defense. Overpass a little bit different in that sense. If they play passive, yeah, it can still haunt you, but you do have options to get aggressive. Unfortunately, those options may have already passed because they've taken long away on the terrorist side. GW, meanwhile, though, has position on the AWP to look in that direction. And he's going to try and take advantage of the slightest gap that he thinks is to his benefit. Can't go too narrow, miss the shot. Can't go too wide and leave himself vulnerable. Smoked off instead and watch bathrooms. How's the rotation from his teammates? Because Lecro is slowly getting in that direction from a single smoke alone. Thankfully, they will commit in this side. It's a long rotation back to be 35 seconds. You pretty much got to commit. It's 37 now, so this will be an ace side. I think he saw the feet, but was a little late to react as he'd already unscoped. Watch Smiths gets in better position. Thankfully, Lecker on the rotation does find Scream on the way through, and he's going to get into the denial position, as we call it. The one that shuts down the default, but a good pick from Body and a good read. Flusher will trade it back and get away. 19 seconds. They've got to get that bomb, and Pronax is very far away on this flank. Yeah, he's coming in from long, so he's playing for the bigger picture here. He's not going to be detected for now. We just had a drop in the server, and he was alive. This is going to be a dispute if they don't collect this round. This was a two versus two that just went to a two versus one. So, they're still so if now. Smiths doesn't clutch this, we will have a dispute on this round, undoubtedly, and that's going to be the case. He dropped out before he was downed. So the admin's already on it. Oh, this is the nightmare one as well. This is when you've got like an equal situation, the player drops out, bombs down, could have gone either way. These take a while to resolve. There's no question because you can't just doctor the round at the very beginning. You're going to say exactly what you said. Bomb is planted. We have post plant. Pronax is on the flank, but Flash is on the stairs. There's so much into it, not to mention the investment that went into the round as well. So this, this could be a bit of a time... Apparently, we say it's good. So I'm interested on that one. Are you sure? Shox is waving his hands. Yeah. Um, yeah. He's got his headset off as well. RPK got the headset off. So this can't be good. It can't be. Nyak, the coach, got the headset already off. talking to the admin. I guess it is going to be good. They're going to call it. He's got headset back in, so we'll see. It's, if so, going to go 4-4. Four, four. There's still money on the G2 side. 
but they're still still contesting it. So it's interestingly enough. So if someone took damage, the ruling is that they might not go back onto it. Issue is it's a tradable situation. So we'll see what they're calling it. Obviously the admins here, they've, they've gone through the ringer. We've got the rule book here as well. It's quite clearly defined in these situations. So they'll know what to call on it. The call seems to be play on. So 4-4 four, four is what it's going to be. God sent. They pick up the, resent, the round, excuse me, potentially as a result of that. It's hard to say, it's situational either way. They did have Pronex on the flank. So once a minute has passed in the round map, or not, someone has died, there, there's no redo after it. So you just continue as is, it's just, to, just to confirm. So we do continue, and G2, another round step away, it's 4-4. Four, four. Double up set up now for JW and Schneider, towards long it seems as well. Wolf could be getting that first pick, yeah, easy as that, JW. Lines the first one up, and now it's a five on four. Can fall back. You can see the CDs rotating at this point in the mini map. Once you've done the hard work, you can actually just hold the choke point back. He's just fall back a stage. He was at the flower bed before. Now he goes to actually towards the APC area. I'm waiting to just take them down one by one. This is a buy for G2, but not the best. You can see they've only got two smokes remaining. A couple of Molotovs, screaming shocks with no nades whatsoever. JW spots the head there. Looking to take the head off the body. Just has to fire into that smoke. Just to go back to that as well, as you said, it's so situational. You're never going to settle that with a perfect situation. And it can happen to either team. So to have it clearly defined as a rule, I'm not against that. If it's after a minute, like you say, if there's damage taken, kills them come in, then yeah, absolutely. We've, we've had some nightmares of big events. with those there's, you, you can't settle it perfectly, so you might as well just define it, and then it's black and white, no gray area. So I'm not against that call. You've got to do something in these situations either way. Back to the action, because it's four players still alive. As you said, not the best buy, but they've got AKs to work with. They've only got one smoke. Take that back. They've got none. They've just thrown that. That's going to go in toward the A site. I think it went back. There's no one truck. So it does give JW a chance to wide peek out toward long. There is one player coming that direction. It's going to be Scream. The rest precipice of the site. Try to fight through against Flusha, who's found one already body. Trades back against Lecto. Slight gap in that smoke, though. It's overthrown just barely. And it catches off body. 13 HP as well on RPKs, and they try and hunt down the drop bomb. He's got to hit a headshot, does so. Down to a one versus two, but nine seconds commits to this plant. They'll wrap around. But are they close enough? He's going to fade out the first. Lovely shot. Nearly caught the opening. Knows the timing. It's done. It can't get it. He's on three seconds, unfortunately. Best effort's not going to be enough. And it's going to go five now for God's sake. Good attempt there from Scream. Starting to get warmed up, getting lively. He gets three frags there, but uh, bomb runs out. And money still as it is. JW, I'm surprised doesn't try and take him down after the time, because Scream could have been caught running back. But JW doesn't want to sacrifice the AWP either. So 5-4. Weapon saved there. And he's going to throw it over to Shoxy here. It looks like they will be forcing in. Those side of scenarios when you like you think you're going to win around and something like that happens, it can get in the head of the players there. It was an interesting buy. They had the AK short, but not really any nades to work with. They went straight towards Long about flashing it. Easy pick up for the AWP at the start of the round. And it seemed like it was a bit of a far cry there from G2 to even pick that one up. But they do force into this one, and Schneider's hearing all of the footsteps here. Pronax is going to be joining in as well. Gets the first kill on towards RPK. At stands an eco with some head armor thrown into the mix as well, and smoked them out. So this has been shut down before it's even begun. Okay, Ooh, then. Oh, might as well. Pronax is there to take it back, but lovely drive by shooting, and well, God center up by one. It's a bit of utility grabbed away. Bomb is down though in those tunnels now, and that's a bit of a problem because Pronax is down there going to be babysitting as well in this UMP. Can't get a teammate closer to his position because they don't have too much information as to what's going on toward the bathroom, so he'll sit here solo. I'd expect them to jump down that ladder as fast as possible. Smart smoke from Pronax as a result. Take away one of the two angles, and they don't quite do it fast enough, but Shox was the one with the AK, so Bates and his teammate, he's able to pick it up. Now they've got Bomb again to work with. They pick the right site. They can still make this work as well because they have to be divided into a 1-2 setup on the defensive side. I don't mind the push from Flusha in this case. They are man up, but they need a little bit of information not to allow the bomb to go through. And he's actually going to get this in a perfect timing. Yeah, this is really nice from Flusha. Not really you can do too much to actually predict this one. You can see coming out with the knife as well. Shoxy thought it was clear, and it's going to be just body remaining now. Three versus one. That's got some armor here, trying to get the positional flank from Flasher there, but he's aware. Takes him down, and that should be the eco for G2 now. A couple of rough rounds for them, and he's going to be 6-4. Money actually starting to fall apart, so this could be like more PT-50s, maybe a couple of smokes here, but uh, the lost bonus is starting to build up for them at least. At least. Something positive on that side. Bomb plant in this round. 
plus what would be a fourth. They'll be fine. And the next for an AWP scream's got 4450 as well. So one of four time routes is going to be used by them right away. It is T side of overpass, another CT side of map still, in my opinion. Oh, yeah, for sure. It's, uh, it certainly is. And now it should be an eco here. You can see Schneider. He's got the MP9 out. It's uh, a weapon I find very hit or miss on the CT side. It's not as efficient as the MAC-10. It seems to sometimes deliver some fantastic results and others to completely miss. But it's going to be an unarmed player, so it should be absolutely fine. JW, he's only got three frags so far, but it feels like he's hitting a couple of good shots here and there. Into round number 11. First half coming to his closing sectors now will be G2. Well, pretty much uh, a partial buy here. You've got some PT-50s, Tech 9s. One flash, sometimes that can be enough to get you a kill. Once you're all together, flash towards middle. Last team is get a bit closer to their entrance towards party. But flash up, nice deep position from him. Throws in to buy himself some more time. We'll just be falling back. Flash up. Oh, flash on the exact time he wants to peek. Tech 9's going to win the kill. No one there to trade it. Gun grabbed. And it's Body that's going to have the AK on the way through. He's got a smoke. I imagine he'll want to get that AK off to an armored player. But for now, get bombed down, get in positions, and we'll deal with all that when the time comes. So far, he's actually going to hold on to it. JW still has control of long. Here's them coming back around. Body's made good work of the first on the AW, or excuse me, on the AK, but the AWP of JW doesn't know there's two flanking. May not matter in the end. Shox is going to pick up that AWP, though. Good positioning. Lecro caught in the open and shuffle down the lane. Brings it back to within one round. There it is. One AK and a few pistols is all it takes. That said, those flashbangs can be very powerful. If thrown at the right time in the correct position, there's one kill is all it takes, especially when you're going that quickly as well. Focusing towards one area, that snowball effect. You pick up one rifle, the bomb goes down. You're isolating players towards long as well. JW is waiting for so long. And Shoxy, once he gets the orb, we've seen how deadly he can be with that weapon. And it's actually, was that? It wasn't a double frag, was it? It just looked like it on the, the end play there, but still manages to... Pick up the round once again for G2. 6-5, the money game back and forth here. It's going to be God sent with scouts and an orb and uh, shotgun CZs, a mixed bag. And the very best as RPK looks at his first frag. RPK flashing himself in, but doesn't account for Pronax behind the stairwell. Good headshot. Yeah, a little bit sloppy there from RPK, considering the economy and the state of it for the CTs. You want to be together. Refragging at the same time. The jump scout coming in for Smiths. Now it's a lovely shot there to take down Flush. It's going to be a four and four, so recovered there. Pronax got down to 12 HP as well. And the bomb should just be walked onto the A side. But there is a bit of a fly in the ointment there. You can see two CD players coming in for T spawn. Their skates are no doubt any impact here. Gotta trade that. Gotta be a headshot from Scream. He's known for it. Goes to a spray. Three HP does eventually get there. We saw in the last round what a gun that's dropped over early can do. That's yep. what was happening with the AKs, but watch Pronex this time because he's got an M4. He's only got 12 HP. He's got a lineup and he's got two again. It might be the stolen gun that comes back to haunt them. It's all in the shocks. Bomb dropped it long. Pronex does have to give that away, relinquish the position given his health condition. But three players up. Where is he safe to plant? Because they've got the default covered off. Schneider's inside of that position at bathrooms. And I think shocks at 33 is going to go hunting before he gives himself up. Yeah, you're always going to be scared, though, when Shox is in this sort of position. He just wants to find one and kill first. Gets him in, so, and it's given himself a higher potential chance of winning the round. The problem is, running out of time now. We hit the 22nd mark. A lot of work to do still. Can't find anyone. Pretty much has to commit towards A. Doesn't really have to have to go towards B and find a player there. So, try and climb behind the truck, potentially. There it goes. And it's, it's where it begins. Can the godsend finish him off? Shox, fall down. Tries to spray it, but he had to be efficient. He had to hit the shots immediately if he wanted any chance. The longer he takes on one, less ammo for the second, and the faster they get into a trade position. Well, Pronax, we did say, I pointed out, just as they're building up today, he started to attack. He was very far away at the time, but he could see what he's building up to. He had 12 HP, he comes in from long as well. This is the first pick on Smith. He comes in from long, finds two players, waiting to plant the bomb as well. He takes two of them down, just shocks left in three versus one. And this is the flank coming in from Pronax. All the way from T-spawn, finds a weapon, and there it is. Three kills for him in total. Good work from Pronax. 7-5, back and forth. Certainly is. And will be godsend with the two round lead for now. We do have money for G2 though, so not fully broken at this point. There's going to be one player on a Tech 9. AK for Scream, but no nades at all. But the AWP is out for Smith. He's got no head armor. That is a little bit of a problem against the M4s. We're going to round number 13 here. Three man stack towards B. Some aggression towards Shorty's teams. Be... Ooh, that's what I'm talking about. Shocks here though, ready to blow off the head. We see so many top players hitting that shot these days. It is, uh, yeah, it, I, that's what, it's, it's, it's almost, with timings, the terrorists should be able to get to that monster position earlier. But with the smoke off, as we know, it gets a position. But if you occasionally get that fast spawn out of B, 
can get that op in so quickly. Schneider, meanwhile, is going to play pivot up next to the boards between both short and monster to trade off in either direction. JW, therefore, is going to position himself at barrels. And Lycro to support all of this and play rotation on A should it be required. And it may be because even though Shox is still lurking, he just wants to distract. RPK, meanwhile, heading back up midstairs, is going to join the rest of the team over toward A. Well, do have a couple of smokes here remaining. They do need this open hand to Smith, so it was good to open up a frag before. Can he provide a similar treatment here in round number 13? It's a big one. They are going to round number 14 with absolutely nothing. So we'll see where the big names can actually step up this round. They will be rotating towards B, it seems. They've got the Molotov as well for the barrel position. He can smoke towards heaven. The bomb site and Shox is giving them that call. The Imkan leader, of course, to see what he can do here. As they come out towards the connector. 30 seconds remaining. This is their final commitment. Flash over. Just a single flash. Hardly catches Schneider, who's in perfect position to catch one, but left in the open. GW wasn't quite there to cover him off, but his position from jungle will be enough to catch our PK. The question is how quick can they get the bomb in position? 13 seconds. They'll do so now. Inside plant as well. Far over to the left from the CT approach. So it's not the standard default, not a lineup. Just walk out. Smith still doesn't quite hit. It does make do on the second and the third as he catches Flusher walking back in. It's now down to a one-on-one. -on -one. And JW, I think, backs away from this. Has a kit, but it's double off. Is he? OK, so he's relocating. I was going to say, it's very early to make that call, considering it's a one-on-one. -on -one. And Smith is going to relocate himself as well. It is planted wide, so we can peek this quite easily from the sandbags. Just thrown AK instead. JW's got time to hunt. Smith is just going to get there. That's going to give away on the AK and his position. That should be enough. Bit Smith doesn't mess. need to peek. <laughs> it was a nice idea. I see what he's trying to do there. Like, obviously, he's given his position away at the CT entrance. Wants to go all the way around. But when the bomb's down at that point, I think that was the wrong call to make. He just had to challenge Smith at that point. Always gave him a free round. Here's JW hitting a, a couple of nice shots to open things up. And with Schneider, we're actually dropping the perfect incendiary, but the T's just ran straight through it. And Smith's the hero of this round. Like I said, JW almost playing himself in this scenario. Runs all the way around and has given Smith enough time to reposition and just hold him off. He didn't even know where he was when he came for the retake at that point. So, 7-6. G2 do claw on back. We did tell it was a big round and that's a testament right now in terms of the bite. Got sent with four pistols. They are kind of forcing into this one. Whether they went all in is, yeah, they did. So 2K left over on JW. And he's a player that's survived in the previous round. So he's got the AK. We'll see. If they can do anything to CZ. So obviously very powerful, close range situations. So if you can pull off into aggressive positions as well. JW's doing just that, but he's got the AK. Chunks is going to wait there as well. Again, he anchors. Two players down and lower, and they are aware of it. RPK, I think, recognized that quite early on, so slips away silently. Screen quick check toward bathroom as well. I think they're going to set, get set for a fast play. Flashes over two of them, one in corner for first rock, one behind the tree for the second. And then send the soldiers hunting. Smiths will sit in the back lines with the AWP to hold them off while the AKs get in position toward bathrooms. Watch the rotation coming in from lower right now, though, from Godsent. That's the one thing that could foil this. They get caught in a crossfire, and the shots are accurate enough from the pistols. GW's AK is far removed from this, so if this doesn't work out, there's a chance he can still save that. Watch body as well inside the smoke, because Bronax may find first duel. Shox will hold that off. It's the bathroom is where the, ba the battle really matters as Flush and Snyder get back toward A site. I think that single kill might be enough. Yeah, they're going to head back over to B. Yeah, and it's going to be open as well. You can see the CTs had to take a bit of a gamble here. Didn't have much to work with at all. So Schneider, Flush and Renekko still in those pistols. JW, he does rotate back in towards B, but it could be a little bit too late here. The walls will start to rain in. At least he gets a call for the rotations at this point. But he needs to step up tremendously here. Dead. Easily picked up, bomb going down as well. And that's going to be another round. So G2 will pull this back 7-7. Seven, seven. Doing well, all things considered, as T-side again. Harder to get those rounds, harder to pick them up. The question is who's going to have that one round advantage. Not that it may matter if pistol round goes the opposite direction. Dead easy. Snyder does pick up a nice shot once that A. Ooh, just barely. I was going to say, once that AK might overstep it, but it's just barely in reach of the E key, so he'll run away with it. Let's be careful not to go to window and get picked off, though, from back toward Monster, so... Either way, gun grabbed. G2, managing to tie things up here. 7-7, seven, seven, keeping four players alive as well. It was that force bite from Godsend puts him in a really tricky position going into the final round of the half here. Here's uh, the play from Body. Some 
Decent shots going into the bomb side. Yeah, JW, he's the only player that can really do anything about the scenario. He's there alone with the AK. He gets some sort of a call for the rotations ever. Can't land the shot at all. He gets taken down. Body finds a headshot. And we go into the final round of the half here. Schneider, he's got the AK. There's an a M4A4 for JW, but three players on pistols once again. So it started off as a really promising half of Godsend. It is starting to fall apart for them here. 8 7. We did say going into this one, Matt. It was suddenly a CT sided map. And G2, this is. I guess one of their best maps to play, like they're no strangers to it at all. And we'll see whether they can step on the CT half here. Looking great to finish things off, 8-7 in their favor. Trying to get a position for Smiths to open things up. Body waiting for him to get over toward the tree and watch long after he'd already peeked in toward the smoke at bench in case there was a push. Can't really afford to push on God's inside. Hail Mary it would be. Perhaps, I guess, end of the half you could justify it in some strange way because again it's going to be one round the difference up or down it's always recoverable shocks inside the smoke has to be very careful too pushing through that's about to dissipate i'm not quite sure the duration i think there's only about seven seconds and he's heard them go behind him sees the shadow now as it does doesn't realize there's two though you can't reset in time not only that flush has found body so it's advantage now for godsend wow and jw even better they've got guns grab we'll pull one back thankfully rpk holds true inside the door at lower he's got the bomb behind him that's still recoverable and still a rotation to be made. Flush is waiting just above this, though. He'll hear them in which direction they're going. Lecro's going to spot him through the door, and in comes Flusher for the flank. RPK's gone very low, has to be dead careful. And it's well time for Flush up. Well, then, a three versus one with 35 seconds remaining as well. It's up to Smith. He's got the AWP, and not going in closer in situations. He's going to have to tech nine out for now. Still has to pick up that bomb as well. This is looking bleak, and just we kind of built it up with G2 finishing off with a strong round there. It's going to be Godsend stealing it away with two rifles and three pistols there. Aggressive, and Flusher helping with the rifle towards the end, managing to finish things off. I, guess I have to say, it's been a very back and forth games and blunders for either side, but uh, still, Godsend, I think they'll be happy with that. Winning the half, all things considered, is fine. Comes down to the pistol, of course. It's going to be a very tight game indeed, I believe. And we'll see as we go straight into the second half, Matthew. I'll have a look at the bye for Godsend and see if we can work out what they're going to do as normal. It's normally the B side that's favored. You do have the option to go towards A with a small execution, but for now, the buyers are coming in. Three sets of armor for now. Make it four. Will Lecro be joining the armor party as well? No, he's not invited, Henry. He is. He just hasn't accepted. Wow. There it is. See, what actually happened is they had to let him come back to them. You know, he was late to join the team again, yeah. so he was late to buy. Ten sets of armor now. Quite rare. G2 known to do this on the CT side. I like to have one kit and a smoke, but you know, that's just me. Bit of aggression here from the CT. It's going to be shocks. That P2000 has got a lot of footsteps and takes a bullet to the face, goes down to 6 HP. It's a good shot from Lycro, considering he stops back with the bomb. The problem on this is that shocks has spotted them cross. Surprisingly, no, they're not that going to push back up on a rotation back through bathrooms. It's quite smart. This is actually very clever because they bait them in a rotation back toward A, even though they occupied this space previously. Schneider's already at B, so even if they do walk back out from lower, Schneider's there to catch them. Unfortunately, doesn't land the shots, but they it causes it so much movement. Look, they're going to T-spawn now. It's like round the world right now. So they went yeah. towards long. There used to be a dust connector. Strat like this. Yeah, it was called round the world. It's literally this, this. But it's kind of nuts. They've been spotted both times. Smith's also going towards connector. So they go all the way around again, towards T-spawn, towards long. Do it again. Yeah, why not? Well, they haven't been spotted this time, so now Schneider's shown his presence towards B, so that's fine. You've got to keep your eye on the mini-map right now. It's kind of a crazy round as RPK does find the first frag finally here. I think they might have overdone it slightly because the first attempt to push them out of B, if Schneider hit shots and they're gone, they might have found something. Unfortunately, too clever for their own good. It's going to be body to shut down Pronax. They've now got this into a five versus two and 35 seconds left. Lacro does come up with one. He is bomb still inside of the side. What? The second and a third! Shoots through two, but not enough in the end. One versus one out of all of that. That got a little bit too close. FOG2 had that locked in for Lecro. A, f a future star, I would say, in terms of the skill he has and manages to make it down to the 1v1 situation. Locked out in the end, but still 8-8 eight, eight now. We certainly have got a game on our hands. No bomb plant to suggest that Godsend will be buying up in this one, but what a nuts approach that was. They go for that fast play towards long, like he said, fully spotted and thought, okay, well, let's rotate players over towards A, but no, they went towards bathroom. Then they crossed the connector, spotted again. They go back through T-spawn and actually go back towards long. They're trying to force the rotations. Like I said, maybe a little, trying to be a little bit too clever for their own good there and uh, ultimately G2 to win the round. Flush up. Already out with JW in this position, has the deagle. So two does Lecro to be fair on armor. They pick up a gun, try and get it over toward him. SMGs only. Not with that armor, might 
Already a bit of an issue for them. Smith's gonna start it off well. Doesn't get up. Can't quite land the second shot though, Flusha. Smith will take him down as well. He's building bank. Keep in mind, AWP, not a bad thing, not a bad situation for him to be in a scream. Turns back and realizes Lecro's inside of the bathrooms, but they still have to contend with Phonex at long, so pick your angles carefully. They've got bomb down. This is round done. Yep, absolutely. And it's a nice solid round. This is an interesting buy though from GT. You can see they've got the five SMGs. So going forward. If they were to make the next round completely clean as well, it's going to be the full bonus round, which is not the best scenario to be in against the AK-47s, I have to say. When I say bonus round, it's when you have five SMGs going into that first gun round. So that's kind of an interesting proposition. There it is, Olecro continuing to find kills, it seems. He takes down Scream with that Desert Eagle. And at this point, he's just trying to bait the CDs into more mistakes. Going to be scaring them off a little bit of that first headshot. And another kill here, but Body takes him down with that UMP. Known to be yeah, very good at the armor penetration. And they do take one player down. So that's almost beneficial for GT now. They'll be able to upgrade one of those players to a rifle at least. Farm some cash up. They lose another player in this round. Get another rifle out against that first gun round here. But it's going to be 9 8 now for G2. There's a left on the screen right now. Been a bit of a confusing year for him. Doesn't yeah. know whether he's in or out. Godsend. As long as it's Swedish, he's there. Lots of movements in the Swedish scene this year, to be fair. The biggest one, obviously, was between Godson and Fnatic, but then we had NIP switch things up quite a few times. Disco Doppler was in there for a while, and then now he's on Fnatic. Body getting close to UMP against just the pistols. No armor this time. Should be pretty straightforward down. Except there's the RPK pushing out. Get down in the end. And MP9 is grabbable. Scream's got to be quick about this, because if JW holds his aggro long enough, they're going to push in the door behind him and just barely gets around the corner to turn to time. Good shot on the USP. <laughs> Try and open that door again. They don't come in. <laughs> One HP for Smiths, but either way, he's still alive. I won't say he's well, but he's alive. Yeah, just flush and remaining. Got a bit hairy there. RPK actually getting a bit ahead of himself. Buys pushing short there at the MP7. Can hit all the players on the other side, and sometimes that can be a bit too tempting. Even for these top players to get those eco spray downs. Gets taken down with the PT50 in the hands of Lecro. Lecro seems to be funny to kill every single round, but uh, he's on 14 for now. The top fragger is still Flusher. He's on his screens right now, but can't do much about this situation. There it is. We do manage to keep up. Is there an M4 that was dropped? There must have been one purchase in our previous round. Nope. There you go. Okay. So four SMGs. Yep. Do they keep this? Surely they've graded at least one more of them. Not. No reason for Epic not to. He's gone down. So grab the rifle. He'll be the only yeah, one. But surely one of these other guys upgrades. Bonus I, guess, round. I know it's just like it's just very difficult to win these ones like you almost give yourself no chance obviously like you're not trying to win these rounds necessarily of course you are but it's like you're not expecting to like every kill you get it's beneficial you get farm so much cash with these smgs you can bring them down to like a two on two that'd be fantastic mm, yeah money still works even though rpk ends up on 800 dollars after yeah, the buy because they've got enough to drop out so it's fine so they do win this round they're great they're, they're loaded Fantastic position, but here we go. Then the first, I guess you can't even really call it as a gun round. It's going to be five AKs against four SMGs and a rifle in the hands of RPK. Let's see what happens. God sent, find an opening here. They should be able to. It's going to come down to crossfires with G2, though. They obviously can't take the long range duels here apart from RPK. They normally place towards the B site. So you want to be playing together, quite compact next to each other, baiting aggro, and uh, not having to walk into your crossfires here. That's the idea with these SMGs. Smiths and Scream with the forward stance looks somewhat similar to Tai Lu, with the exception of. Only three players on the A site, not a fourth. No one heading that direction just yet from God's sense. By the time they get there, utility's already going to be deployed and depleted. They've already thrown a smoke in front of the bathrooms. In fact, two now on the CT side. They've got one left. They've got three Molotovs, but they've got one smoke left. And the nade going in towards Smith's. Rather extreme and Smith's, but mostly on the screen. Quite up the stairs, takes him down to 77. Next and Schneider out toward long as well. No AWP, so no one to boost on top of flower pots to try and find that opening shot. Instead, it's going to be an AK in that position just to hold the angle and let Pronax closer. As Flusher gets inside the smoke, watch the crossfire. You said it. That's what it's going to come down to and scream. He's making a lot of noise inside of that smoke. Flush the spots one, not the other, but it's traded. JW knew he was there, just had to find it. Would have been nice if he could find it before his teammate was lost because they're losing numbers elsewhere. They pull it back. Two versus two. Bomb going to be planted. Body. Rotation to the back stairs isn't quite going to get in position to catch off the planter and retreat. The flames will hold off RPK, and they've got to sit and wait. Smoke in front of body as well. It's going to be another six seconds before they even have a chance to go toward this, and without a kit, that's an infinite amount of time. 
Like we said, though, this two on two, still great for G2. Finding kills, might not win the round, but they've dented the economy of the team, built up their own with the kills. And like you said, SMG crossfires coming in. It comes down to two on two. That's fine. They'll have money going forward. And this is RPK playing the B side by himself there, finding kills on towards Lacro. These are the kills we didn't see. And uh, as the action is going on towards A, but it comes down to quite a tight situation. Could have been certainly winnable now, but now they've actually done a lot of damage. So this is what it's building up to. Like they've done so much damage to Gods, and they have to fully reinvest into this round, right? So they go down to what, like 500, 600 dollars across the board for each player average. And then if G2 pick this up, and they've got the advantage of the AWP, that's an eco for Gods, and almost certainly. So that's the idea of that SMG buy to do as much damage as you possibly can. Not expecting to win the round necessarily, just looking to the future. Micro. Oh, he's fast along, but so too are the CTs. Better flash timing from the terrorists, though, as they get around the corner. It almost looked like a flash was going the other direction. It doesn't get there. And Shock's only able to get one. So a very aggressive gamble from G2. That's after the bonus round. Why not do that with the SMGs? You get the rifles out, you're going to throw those away. Good thing Body's at least holding composure to find JW. Well, well, well. A very fast round from Godsend. Met by equal aggression with the CTs, but for now, three on two. RPK in a great position to find his next kill, though. Nails it, finds more, but can't stay alive for long enough. It's going to be a two versus one body on the AWP in the right position for now. Nails the shot, but can't find the kill. That's so big. Stays in the flames, wants to catch them off. Has to back away. 16 HP left for Lecro after all of that, but that won't matter against the hop, and Flush is going to find the angle. Godsend bring it 10 10, and money. Ooh, it's on the cusp. You could force if you're G2. We know the French side's. They and Envious obviously love to do so, but do you want it right now, really? I'm not so sure. I think take a pause potentially. Work it out. What's the plan? It doesn't look like they're buying just yet. So a partial buy at the CZ suggests they won't be fully invested into one, which is probably fine. It's 10 10. Like we said, it's a CT side and map. Let's get the money up properly. Let's not lose this game through four spies and just wrecking our own economy. It's a nice conservative call from them. I do appreciate those from G2. 10 10. Should get our gods and get the lead this round but you never know the CZs, CSGO, a couple of players of armor there as well and a kip. They know there is a chance they can win this one so I said that with baited breath when I say Godsend should win the round. As we go into round number 21 it is a little like three man stack towards B and a player in connector as well so it could feel interesting but rough flush up. Like we said this is the correct way to play anti-eco. Sit back, wait for the CD to make the first move, see what they're presenting towards you then capitalize when they made the mistakes. Snyder will get shocks, and like I say, correct way leads to the correct results. Scream, last alive, and try to do what damage you can from the inside stairs, but already tagged up down to 24, and Schneider. If he could climb over there, he'll try and get him back oh, position. Scream's got accuracy today, I'll give him that. He's had a few nice headshots. Unfortunately, they now, found they now find themselves down around, so that's not going to be enough. They're going to have to find more, and specifically, I need to see more. Calculated aggression. I still say it was a bit curious as to why they don't try the rush with the SMGs rather than the rifles. Well then, God sent to pick up the lead at this point at 11-10. So G2 are fine with that. That was obviously the little partial buy, just some CZ, some body armor, a couple of kits here and there, some nades. This is what it's leading to. Give Smith the AWP. They didn't want to lose out on four spies. They're going to guard themselves to actually get weaponry here. And the Mac Tepper JW, that's actually kind of a cool buy. Look at the CTs. No head armor whatsoever on that CT side. So he can actually cause a lot of damage here and be very fast while doing it. Symmetrical buying guns on the CT side. I always see DS to point that out. Smith's a good shot to hit Lecro, backs away as well before that can be redressed. But as you said, headshots, and he gets exactly that. Schneider, he'll take screen, but that leaves him susceptible and vulnerable of getting taken down in return from the AWP. So one in, one out. Pronox has to flash him, rather smoke himself off of that position to get away. So it actually takes away utility from the terrorists that far out. And Smith will take advantage of the fact that he's pinned down and wants away to move elsewhere as well. So he has to be a little bit dynamic. There's not much you can do once he get into the confines of the A site. Just pick your angle and stick to it. But he's got body to help him, and his aggression could catch off JW as well. Oh, where's the position for Pronax going to be? Because if body wraps around right now, oh, that's just outside the door. Bit of a stalemate right now. I don't want to give anything away at this point. The bomb's going to be making its way towards connector. You can see Flusher towards short of the B area. It's one CT in B. That's RPK. Patience. Patience for him is the best thing he could possibly do at this point in time. Just sit and wait. Body's still hunting for where JW is. The good news is he's got him locked down if his patience pays off. Pronax peeks out, shoulder spotted. Oh, got a switch. Body downed. 
And that's going to bring the bomb back onto A. If everyone had stayed patient, RPK might have been beneficial with the fact that they go over toward B instead. Which way are they going to go, though? Because oh. Washa getting inside B and they lose the A site. Pronax will head back that direction. They will have just enough time. I was, yeah, I was just about to say, the timing comes down to it, but there's enough. It's Pronax. They know where Smiths is as well. Yes, he's got three kills as round to require an ace to win it. He's got a kit, but regardless, yes, it's only a 2v1, but you've got a, this, they've got so much time to position now, and it doesn't even look like he's going for it at this stage. He, he knows that's going to be unlikely. He knows the money's in the bin for the CT to this point. Saves the AWP. Maybe take a couple of them down on the exit frags and you have a chance to maybe buy into the next round and saving that AWP to see what they can possibly do. And that was actually quite clever from Pronax in terms of timing because they had a player on either site. If he'd committed either way and been wrong, if they'd lost the player in the respective site that he was heading toward, he would not have had time to back out. So he sits, waits at the connector as soon as they get kill on B and more importantly, and on top of that, lose A, he just goes directly that direction. So we get $2,900 for G2 here. Let's just say... They do go for the Hail Mary play. They go for the all-in here. They've got the AWP. So, Smiths can probably drop a Famous. He could actually drop an M4. They can buy two Famous on top of that shotgun, maybe a 5.7 as well. They could buy into this. It's, I would say at this point, I'd say it certainly is a viable idea. Considering they've got the AWP, you need to go all-in a little bit here, maybe chuck that towards Monster Tunnel. But right now, God's in a great position. They know saving that AWP does suggest that might be a possibility. So, there is a UMP purchased. Not all-in just yet. Not going for it from what I can see. It's going to be the UMP, a 5.7, some body armor. So once again, the conservative option, like you said before, it's actually quite a rare to see from the French teams. They like to force by just you know, these opportunities too. JW, blast in the past. P90 comes out. Don't see it too much as what you did in 2015. It was a very prevalent yeah. weapon, but lots of running gun potential. Don't get the same kill reward and Scream locks it down. A chance now for G to do something with this round. Gives the P90 away and RPK pushes off short, finds Flusher. This is actually very... Excuse me, very sloppy from uh, Godsend. We said before we complimented them on how they were playing the anti ecos Swap back to last half. I'll get back to my point in a second because there's a mirrored situation that actually worked out the same way okay. as the eco wins it. The last time we saw a player playing behind that stairwell was in the first half. Pronax got a kill with the CZ75, picked up an M4, flanked them at long. They won a, a, a four spy slash eco round where they didn't have opportunistic weapons do the exact same thing with you at the exact same position as the p90 over commits so like i said before what makes a really good anti-eco is you're holding back together you're getting refrags this time it looks like got sent getting really ahead of themselves and we've got this game boys let's just step their eco let's rush in find the frags i've got a p90 i'm just going to run around and kill them would be easy he goes towards short gets his head blown off and kills fall apart connector as well and here we have g2 now in the driving seat i would say the double orb setup comes out my shocks as well he's been phenomenal at the open this map alone so we need some decent shots. JW does buy an AWP in return, but that's a big round for GG to pick up, and one Godsend shouldn't really throw it away in that fashion. So Smith goes long fast with his AWP. Shocks didn't have the best spawn to get to B, but he gets aggressive. We've seen him do this on Cobblestone, where we've seen him go down drop with an AWP. He's already inside construction. Thankfully, for his sake, they're not at the doorway at Squeaky. He'll sit and post up, watch that. RPK covers his back. Meanwhile, it's on A that all the action is. As Smith's with his, started it long, got no read, fell back. And now has so much utility in front of him, he's got to go back toward looking at long, unfortunately, in a more passive position, which gives up ground and a potential execution on a godsend. Yeah, well, some of the people have picked up a flusher doing damage towards screen. They're very close indeed. I thought he had enough to pick up the kill, but it's a passive mentality for G2, wanting to let these orbs do most of the work here. Smith's as well a player towards long, but can't find a shot just yet. Smith's quick flash out toward Long to buy himself some space just in case they are pushing up, but no one at bathrooms peeking back out. That's what he was hoping for. Oh, Steady takes the fight. Watch to his left. Flush is there. He dodges his own flash, but turns back and realizes he's done himself no right by putting himself in that position. Scream also caught flush at great entries. They may just pull this back. You know, two man advantage bomb going down default. They're going to hold out. They're going to back away. Yeah, Shocks hasn't even moved. You can see what Smiths is trying to do there. He's trying to play in front of the smokes. We talked about this in the previous matchup as well. When you see it start to rain in at that point, you want to actually be in front of them. You allow the orb to actually find something there. How do you back up from an M4? Maybe that'd be viable. I think that's a bit too much of an all-in move there. As soon as he goes down, the bomb's planted. You can see it. You spotted it straight away. They're going to be saving their weapons. It's too much of a tall order at that point. Smiths. The heroic play attempted, but unfortunately for him, it's going to be flush. Yeah, finding two straight-up frags. Scream can't get anything rolling either. So, five on three. Shots, he should find this kill nice and easy. It's going to be very nice going down. But I think this is the right call from G2. The money certainly has been a bit of an issue for them going forward. They will be at... Oh, the, the loss bit has obviously been reset now, so... I think they do have 7K for Smiths. 4K on Scream as well, so the money's fine. It's probably a correct call. They wouldn't have won that round, and that's the play from Smiths. Trying to make it happen in front of those smokes just before they can even execute. Fortunately, they got flashed out, and Scream left in a horrible position with a similar mentality towards Long. 
So the AWP's still up for J-Dub. Yes, but this is the tactical pause with G2. Like we said, got a decision to make now. Double AWP set up the first time. They just ran at that round. Didn't work out for them. Maybe from an interesting call from Smiths there, but that's how you win big games is with the, the big calls and trying to go for. This is the a play discussion. Yeah, well, we can we can kind of we can kind of hear it, can't we? Like it's kind of interesting to see like the kind of. Tu parles en français? Not necessarily that. It's just like the the mannerisms and the kind of t like the kind of tone to their voices when they're kind of playing. When like, frustrating moments happen or high octane interactions are going on, it'll be quite interesting to be this close to the players. Pass on right body. Don't body block. A. Still got it, boys. That's why they pick. He's here all week. Sadly. Sorry yeah. about that, guys. <laughs> be rushing, teams. Here we go. RPK is going to be patient in beside the bomb site itself. They have to commit up the ramp. He's got headshot potential from down below, but the stick goes off the flash, misses shots. They now know he's there. So it can be returned upon him if they get position and a flash in his direction. Thinks he sees one coming to his left. Instead, it's a nade to clear out barrels, but Lecro's up close, and there's no one counting that off to trade. Shox has been forced back wow. by an entrance from short, and Lecro's got another bomb, goes down. They outdid themselves, and RPK missing shots. Return served to Godsent, and as soon as they came in short, he couldn't be supported. Chox had to back away with the AWP. Got a save again. Double up set up save, but Godsent now getting dangerously close to map point. It will be 14-11. Be rushed. Why not? Going towards that tunnel, and it's going to be Lecro. Like he said, a start in the making at the moment. Had some great tournaments this year. Showed us what he could do, especially DreamHack Malmo. And, uh, yeah, great entry frags there. If you get your first player going in, finding kills like that, opening up the bomb site. Pretty much nothing G2 can do about it. They got the double orb set up for the retake. It's a bit of a nightmare. They're getting smoked out, Molotov out, nade out, and uh, so they just have to fall back and concede another round to them. Shoxy's keeping everyone calm. I can see him right now. He's like saying, "Okay, just keep the keep the weapon real alive. It's all fine." Keep these double orbs rolling. Screen for another kill. That's part of the plan. And you can see Lecro. Great work by him as soon as he comes in towards B. Mm -hmm. Screen finding another kill is interesting as well because he can drop. Does exactly that. He would have had enough anyway, I guess. He, yeah, he's got 650 left over, so he would have had enough. So it was fine, but they will get guns out on everyone again. Indeed, they will. So 14-11, one more for Godsend will be map points. And obviously, this is a Swiss format. One win counts you. Three, you get three, you go through. At least three, you go out. So this is a massive game in the context of things. And another B-Rush, it seems. RPK trying to battle back, though. Finds two. But it will be the three-on-two favor for Godsend, looking for map points. And body blinded up. You'd expect more from him in that position. Schneider's got no way. Scream knows it, but Schneider smartly realizes he's gone aggressive. That's the accuracy we talked about. Problem is he's got a lot of ground to cover before he gets toward the B-site. Bomb already planted. Kits on either of them. That'll give them a bit to work with, but he's making a lot of noise. Flush has got him pinned off. Good actual flash through, but what to the chance. Oh, yeah, doesn't quite count it. That was a nifty flash. I'll give him that, but didn't check the corner as he should have done. That's a nice little flash there. Right click, open the door, pops out. And now then, map. map point has been obtained. Another B rush there. Godsend keeping things simple, and it's paying dividends so far. JW, and in the shot there with the AWP taking down Smiths, and it will be now the money. What have we got? We have a Famous, a UMP. Make that two. Shock C three. Oh, this is a, a bit of a nightmare. Your map points. You got three SMGs. A Famous as well. No kits. Yeah, I've got a few grenades to work with here, but I think at this point, probably just bait in one player towards B for Godsend. Keep things a little bit interesting towards that area. Slow things down. You know the money's going to be crippled for G2 overall. Yeah, that's the big thing, that two versus two. Evaporated so quickly. What difference it could have made. Would have been a buy either way, but it's to break afterwards. Smiths starts off well for the French side, though. Does find the opening pick on flush up. Never mind AWP. Perhaps the rifle better suited. Two in the round, the only M4. He's down to 42 HP, backs away as well. Keep in mind there's no kits. That's the bigger issue because if they get fast entries on the way through, as Pronax does on Smiths, and they get a bomb down for rotations, they've got problems. And Pronax finding two, but caught in the open. Nade out, traded back. Lecro, lovely shot, and bomb is in position. Fast flank from Scream. He's picked up one. This will segregate the two of them. The Lecro needs to be traded immediately. Scream needs to go, and it's not going to happen. Lecro closing it out. Three kills to do so. And it's 16 11, godsend. Sending G2 down a notch. Yeah, very back and forth game there, Matt, but Godsend running away with it towards the end. Those nice decisions there. We